Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. And today I'll be reading a Linux listener by me. So let's get into it. You have never told Lenny about your family. And he never asked about them since you never brought them up. He brought up his siblings a lot. But never his parents because, well, he was an orphan. And Harlequino was not someone he could talk about easily. So... He would just never talk about any guardian or parental figure. And it was not weird now that you never talked in return. Maybe you just needed someone to talk first for you to be able to do so. Regardless, he never really had the thought to ask about them. But lately, when you've mentioned them, they seem to be just causing you more problems. You can't go because they didn't want you to. You can talk to him because they're around, and so on and so forth, it kept on happening. At first, he just thought that it was out of respect, or out of you wanting some privacy, or maybe because you wanted to spend some time with them, but then he noticed that you were afraid of them, and that, that made him feel awful. I would still be afraid of their family. Family is all you have. Family is supposed to be loving and kind. Not like that. Never like that. And so he is rightfully irked about it. And does not like the situation. Especially when it keeps repeating. But... He had no idea if he could do anything about it. But when it kept happening over and over, he was getting concerned. Especially when you cancelled your date all of a sudden. Telling him that it was just something out of your own control. That you would not be able to come. And he was your boyfriend. But most of all, he knows people. He has siblings. He's been through a lot of stuff. Him and his siblings too. So he just got that sense that something was not right. And he had to investigate on his own. And so he started asking around about your family. And heard what the people were saying. Her father is a madman. Oh, her mother barely comes out of the house. We once saw why I was a bruise when she came out of her home. And as it kept happening, the rumors and the truths and facts got him mixed up. He knew he had to do something. Despite how it may all be just talk, a percentage of it had to be true. And considering that most of what he heard was not good at all, he knew he had to intervene. That's why he immediately went to you. To your house. Yes, your parents may be there, but they were not going to stop him. No one was going to stop him from taking you and making sure that you were okay and not being hurt. He was not going to stand for this, or let it go on any longer. And when he knocked, your dad refused to let him in, confirming all of his suspicions. That's why he waited for late at night, and then he snuck into your room. You were sleeping, and there were dry tear stains on your face, a bruise on your cheek, and his heart... Oh, it was shattering inside of his body. How could anyone do this? Why would anyone do that when you were such a good person? You were kind. You were lovely and patient. He doesn't get why any parent would do this to their own child. And yet, those parents exist. And you are their own child. How unfortunate. How undeserved. And they don't deserve you at all. He knows that very well, because he would do many things for them. So many times you would tell him that you just wanted to make them happy, that you were doing your best, and he believes it. He knows that it's true because he sees how hard you work, but you don't deserve it in the end. Moyan, darling, please wake up, he whispers, and it's no wonder that you get shocked. It's not like you were expecting someone. A stranger? Well, he's not exactly a stranger, but he's not someone that lives in your home, and... 
not someone you expect to be at the foot of your bed waking you up. So you do wake up with a little bit of a heart attack, a minor one. Lenny, what are you doing in here? You scared me, you know that? I felt like I was going to die just looking at you. Hey, I don't look that bad. I may have been waiting outside for a little bit, but I'm sure I look just fine. Oh, that's not what I'm saying. I just didn't expect you to be here. How did you even come in? I'm sure my parents wouldn't have let you in. Your parents can suck it, Wyan. You don't usually hear that language from him. So you find yourself giggling, shaking your head. All right, all right. I guess you found out then. You say, a little bit sad, but you're signed, and he hates that tone on you. So he picks you up into his arms, and you're so surprised and shocked, but you have no time to react or do anything about it. Lenny, what are we doing? I'm taking you. Hey, you can't just take me away like that. That's kidnapping. It's not kidnapping if you agree. Well, did you ask me first? No, but I know, Wyan. You want to be with me. I'll grab your things. But first, let's just get you home. Home is where the heart is. That's what he once knew when he was a child. When he knew that nowhere felt like home. Except when he was with his own siblings. And he hoped that was him. You can feel like you're at home, away from the abuse, away from your parents who exploited you, who hurt you over and over. He will show you love and kindness, and he will show you what the home is supposed to look like. You're a little bit reluctant and nervous, of course you'd be, but in the end it's worthwhile. When you wake up in the morning to a smile, when he makes sure to make you breakfast, so he sees that big smile on your face. When he comes back home to see you sitting on the couch, and instead of yelling at you for lazing around, he hugs you because he missed you, asks you about your day and tells you about his. And that's when you discover what family means and just what a true home is supposed to be like.